Volcanic eruptions can last for weeks, months, or even years. This violent event is terrifying. But what if another storm, say a tornado or hurricane, combined with a volcanic eruption? Tornadoes only form during giant thunderstorms called supercells. And according to George Kurunis, storm chaser and host of Angry Planet, supercells are already frightening. They're the biggest storms on planet Earth. I've seen ones that have been twice the height of Mount Everest. All that energy rotating around produces torrential flooding, hail to the size of baseball or larger, vicious lightning. And that rotation can come all the way to the ground and produce massive tornadoes. Could one of these massive tornadoes strike an active volcano? Let's back up a bit. Before we get into the details, we need to visit the basics. For a tornado to happen, you need just the right ingredients. When you're trying to forecast a tornado, you have to try and make a three-dimensional picture of the atmosphere from the ground all the way up, almost to space. The moisture humidity, wind patterns, wind shear, all of these different ingredients. And if something is off just ever so slightly, it just wrecks the whole recipe. So what are those ingredients? First, you need an updraft which can happen when cold air comes in and shoves warm air higher into the atmosphere. Then you need winds to change direction at different atmospheric heights. As the warm air rises, it starts to spin. If there's enough spin, then that column of air rotates until it makes contact with the ground. And now you have a tornado. Volcanoes form when magma escapes from the Earth's core through a crack in Earth's crust. In some volcanoes, the magma is too thick and traps gas bubbles. Eventually, this creates so much pressure that the volcano blows its top. But according to George, there is a lot left unknown about the Earth's core. If you were to shrink the Earth down to about the size of an apple, the crust portion would be about as thick as the skin. And we have never gone deep enough to do more than even just scratch the surface of that skin. Usually these two natural phenomena don't happen in the same geographical location. There aren't many volcanoes in Tornado Alley, after all. But there are places where the possibility of the two colliding become more of a reality. Italy, surprisingly, gets quite a few tornadoes. As a matter of fact, one was reported there just the other day. So we've got a place here in Europe where they get tornadoes from time to time and they also have active volcanoes. Mount Etna is active all the time. Inti Stromboli is erupting today. It erupts every single day and has been doing so for 2,000 years. All right, so let's say that the largest tornado ever documented is going to hit Mount Vesuvius, which is the volcano that destroyed the city of Pompeii. What would this catastrophe look like? So if you had a tornado that big, as strong as tornadoes get, between 250 to 300 plus miles an hour, air starts to basically act like a solid, it's so powerful. So you take that and you combine that with a volcano. This tornado would pick up the fire, smoke, and ash from the volcano, creating a spinning vortex from hell. You've got sulfur gas, you have volcanic ash, which is microscopic shards of basaltic glass. Just the ash alone, being whipped at those speeds would sandblast your skin completely off of your body in seconds. It's a level of destruction that is difficult for the human brain to comprehend. Lava is melted rock, and it's three times denser than water, so it's quite heavy. Different kinds of volcanoes eject lava of different thicknesses. Mount Vesuvius is a stratovolcano, which means it is made up of many layers of hardened magma, volcanic ash, and material created from volcanic eruptions called tephra. Stratovolcanoes have slow-moving lava that hardens before it spreads very far. Unfortunately, stratovolcanoes also tend to erupt violently. During the eruption of Vesuvius, back in Roman times, it was a Plinian eruption. It was style of eruption where you have these massive explosions, you have rocks, you got chunks of lava, now they're being whipped around by 300 mile per hour winds. We're talking the worst place in the world to be. 
And that's not all. Like a fire tornado, a lavanado would spread hot ash and magma over the surrounding area, setting it ablaze. Golf ball-sized hail, debris, and hardened lava could rip through trees, buildings, and cars. Its core could reach temperatures of 1,093 degrees Celsius, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, burning anything it touches to a crisp. It is possible that a tornado could strike a volcano like Vesuvius. The odds are infinitesimally small, but it's not zero. Well, that's good news. But what about a volcano creating its own tornado? Volcanoes are so powerful that they can create their own weather. As a volcano spews hot gases and molten lava, the surrounding temperature increases rapidly. This forces cold air to rise and stretch out into a column, creating a massive cloud formation. Something similar happened in 2020 in the California wildfires. I'll let George explain. During the California wildfires, we had an interesting situation where the fire was so intense that the heat coming off the fire created an updraft that formed what we call a pyrocumulus cloud. The cloud grew so big, it turned into a thunderstorm, a pyrocumulonimbus cloud. And then it started to spin. So now we had this supercell thunderstorm that was literally created by the wildfire and that storm produced an EF3 tornado. So hypothetically, something similar could happen over a volcano as it creates its own weather. And if the wind over a volcano suddenly changes direction and increases in speed, the column of colder air could begin to rotate, creating a tornado. Thankfully, this destructive storm has a short lifespan. Like a normal tornado, the Lavanado would only last around 20 minutes. It would also have a limited range. Because it's created by the unique weather of hovering over a volcano, it wouldn't be able to travel very far. Once the Lavanado moves away from the volcano's hot gases, it would start to break up. But the fires it started would still be raging. We've talked a lot about tornadoes and volcanoes. But what would happen if a hurricane hit an active volcano? Hurricanes are much larger and longer lasting than tornadoes. With a horizontal reach of over 1,600 kilometers, 1,000 miles, and wind speeds over 252 kilometers per hour, 157 miles per hour, it's much more likely that an active volcano and a hurricane would combine. But surprisingly, not much would happen other than the normal destruction caused by a hurricane, that is. Because a hurricane is so much larger than a volcano, they would have very little effect on each other. If the active volcano is large enough, and we're talking massive here, it could make the hurricane bigger and stronger. And the hurricane could spread the volcano's dangerous volcanic ash further away. But that pales in comparison to the effects of a lavanado. There are about 1,500 active volcanoes on Earth, and each of them could create a lavanado during an eruption. And what's even more dangerous than a volcano creating a lavanado? all those volcanoes erupting at the same time. But that's a story for another what if.